Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the stranger things going on in the world of Linux. So, ooky spooky. Tis mm-hmm. the season, right? It's holiday season. <laughs> yes. It is. Well, it's starting to be anyway. No, you absolutely. <laughs> look, man, Frank's got on a Santa hat. Yeah. yeah. It's beginning you just to look a lot like Christmas. A bit. <laughs> He's been wearing that for a long time. No, he hasn't. You can shut up because <laughs> that, that took 15 minutes to get set up because I had to cut holes and things, man. So you can just oh. go away, Pedro. Ben had to put real work into that. Hey, beautiful people. Yeah, as opposed to everything else in here, I, I just like slipped and it fell into place. Man, um, I'm Vin Stone. That's Joe Bryant. And uh, over there is Pedro Mateus. And we got quite the show for you this week. Um, been up to a bunch of things. I know, Jill, you had a surprise package show up right before the show. Yay! Yay! So I'm so excited. It's here. It's here. So I got my Raspberry Pi 400 computer kit in the mail and I got it this morning. I haven't even had a chance to fire it up. So that's what I'm going to be doing after the show. So next week, I'll, All right. I'll let everyone know <laughs> my progress and what I've done with it. I'm very excited. Right on. Here, camera. <laughs> camera. <laughs> you know, what's cool is the SD card has a little spring in it like a proper device. So when you take it, you want to <laughs> They've sold it. out. Raspberry Pi is sold out. Man. See, it's got spring. Okay. I, uh, I, I'm going to need both this Raspberry Pi 3A and this Raspberry Pi 4 to not be offended by Jill just implying yeah. that they're not real devices. Dude. <laughs> yeah, for real, that's true. Everyone, you got to admit just... the best part about a spring-loaded micro SD card is its ability to launch it Directly yes. into your stove, and you're wondering how because you're in the basement. You're like, what? what is it? Yeah, but it was just a, a nice little added bonus. <laughs> it has a spring in its step. Well, it is the fastest Raspberry Pi around, so okay. yes, yes, it works. <laughs> right on. Anything else? Oh yes, yeah, so and I had a had a wonderful time on Jupiter Broadcasting's Linux Unplug yesterday. And it's always fun to be with uh, Chris and the Jupiter Broadcasting gang. <laughs> I'm still seeing if thing fits. I haven't worn it yet. I bought this last yeah. year. Yeah. Like, Ooh, yeah. It's a shirt. It's keep me warm. That's the end of my story, Pedro. What? Uh, uh, <laughs> you wrote nothing. I, I wrote nothing because I have nothing to uh, work. <laughs> As we're walking into Christmas, people thought, you know, it's a good idea to hire a bunch of people right now. So, yeah, <laughs> we're at the point where we don't have enough laptops. <laughs> mm. Oh, boy. So, so, so did we're, you have, a, we're a having minute. a look at the pile of like older models with hard drives in it. And oh. going, well, maybe. <laughs> Let's let Pedro upgrade these. <laughs> I'm, 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 frankly, I'm surprised they didn't call you, but like, you need to bring some of those back. <laughs> I don't bring laptops home. Well, the, okay. I brought my work one. All right. That's it. <laughs> Man, I've been playing around with a bunch of stuff. I've uh, been prototyping like a semi advanced, uh, kind of in the weeds, um, like a Jack digital mixer setup. You know, it's a guide for like Linux streamers and Jordan has nice. set up his own test bed. He's given me some feedback on it. And the first draft of the, it's going to be like a combination video guide with a bunch of stuff to take care of on your system. But the first draft of that video is in the announcements. If you're a patron, you can get into our discord, take a look at it. I wouldn't play with it just yet, but you can watch it, kind of get an idea of what's going to take place and you can help if you want more than welcome to follow along um, and provide some feedback because I, I got to revi- refine. I got to cut the sharp edges off this monster. But um, yeah, if you're a you know, podcast or streamer or anything like that, this is going to be a nigh invaluable resource about the right way to get things set up without having to spend money. That's the important thing. You're going to be able to use your mm. existing hardware and it's going to show you how to make a smaller version of what we have here. And maybe I'll get that out um, by the end of the month. I mean, I, 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 this is a very complex topic to tackle, and it's very important to come into it. Like, Pedro's scared of it. Yes. He is. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not saying that to give him a hard time. Pedro's like, I don't want him. Fortunately, Jordan was like, yeah, I got this. And he's hammering on it. So, uh, yeah, we want to go take a look at that. And, uh, Stay tuned. That's going to be an exciting, exciting little project, but not as exciting as uh, people complaining 
about the lack of Linux <laughs> Aww. on the new M1 <laughs> Macintosh. But yeah, so there's a guy, Pedro. You might might have heard of him. Um, he's a uh, like Hector Martin. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're probably gonna have to talk about that. But he's mm-hmm. like, mm, well, what would be a good way to uh, possibly get the Mac up and running some Linux? Well, maybe making it a little bit of a goal. He set up a Patreon account, and he's like, yo, um, I'm going to do this. You might know me from, um, you know, a Bestos for the PS3, and, you know, a little thing called Linux on the PS4. Fail overflow. Yeah. Yep. He's yeah. one of the members. <laughs> the dude <laughs> has done some things. Hector has set up a Patreon campaign, and Campagan even. He's like, yo, check this out. Give me some coin. If you got some coin to spare and I'm just going to work on this full time, might need to hire some people to help out with it. But, but this isn't going to be locked behind anything. It's like I'm going to put it, push everything out to GitHub and we can get it up and running. I think this is kind of interesting, um, especially since all the development's going to be in the open. And I think a lot of people, including Linus himself, he talked about it last week. He was like, God, I love an ARM laptop. Yeah, wouldn't we all? A good one. Shut up, Microsoft. Mm-hmm. You, that doesn't exist. Quit. You, you're trying to pretend you didn't even make that. Um, <laughs> Apple. Apple has an interesting choice to make because oh, I know Pedro and I have discussed this. The quickest way to get Linux on your device is to not allow people to install Linux. Try and lock on it your down. Device. See what happens. Yeah, lock it down. <laughs> I yes. think it was um, extra credits that coined the do not tango with the types of people who want to install Linux on their PlayStation. You will lose. Mm-hmm. Um, this, I, I want to see what Cupertino comes up with because you, they do have a legitimate choice. Are they going to make this uh, friction free? Or are we going to come up with some way to just get Linux on the M1? play with it or are they going to have to uh have it open for them because that will eventually happen or option three how about we just not buy hardware from companies that are hostile towards (laughs) (laughs) yeah you need to tell ida storvolds that because um, i don't think he's buying one (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, uh, right now he says, sure, I, I'd love to get my hands on one, but I need working GPU drivers, and um, right now that's not happening. So, <laughs> even the PS4 uh, Mesa implementation for the weird South Bridge type of GPU that they happen to have on that system, it's not 100% of the way there, but yeah, so yeah. 3D acceleration, uh, proper GPU support would be a must-have for uh, Linus Torvalds. So, yeah, no, don't, okay. don't, mm-hmm. don't give Apple money. Aww. Well, you know, we, when we talked about this last week, I was even thinking, I bet you the the guy that worked on this PlayStation and the Nintendo Switch hack, uh, getting Linux on those devices, is going to be involved in this. And sure enough, he is. And um, I think this is really great. I would like to have the M1 chip with Linux on it, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and uh, everyone out there, make sure to contribute to Hector Martin's Patreon campaign if you want this to happen. This is this is a good thing, getting Linux on it all is. the devices. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, if Apple doesn't play a ball, uh, that yeah. will just be broken open for everyone on the internet. While if they help them, they can maybe not reveal the rest of the vulnerabilities and just say, no, no here's the way to do it. Well, yeah. I, I was reading this post. Um, you can get in for a buck. It's pretty cheap. Uh, but he's already working on um, doing discovering registers and all the fun stuff right now. So... Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and I want to read the postmortem like they did with the PS4, where they explained like everything they had to go through. Yeah, I want all to the read reverse that engineering. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. The w- worst case scenario, you're going to get a very entertaining talk about this. And yeah. <laughs> so, GNOME three thirty eight point two. This is like a little point release, isn't it? Yeah, well, it, it is and it isn't. There's l- tons of updates and bug fi- fixes, so this is actually a really important release and the and the last one of this of this year. And one of my favorite things, uh, my uh, most annoying bugs that has been fixed, and one of my favorite things is the GNOME Control Center now correctly detects when Ethernet devices are hot plugged. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was definitely an issue. And um, uh, of annoyance, yes. So I'm glad that's fixed. And gosh, they have updates to everything, to the, the music player and even to the GTK emoji chooser. Um, <laughs> you'd think that's not important, but it kind of is, especially for those of us who do lots of tweeting. <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> you can um, now allow inserting multiple emoji by pressing the control key on the keyboard. And they updated the emoji data to Unicode 13. Now, that's a big deal. <laughs> oh, so. does it have the uh, anatomically correct heart emoji yes, now it does it does <laughs> <laughs> but uh the one thing and the irony was absolutely not lost on me the second paragraph mm -hmm. of the article proper is uh, they improved support for uh in gnome boxes um to have gnome os installed <laughs> How, yes. it, you know, in that teeny tiny <laughs> little GUI application that you created for QMU and KVM and uh, I think Libvirt as well. How do you not support your own OS? You know, the OS that is there, much <laughs> like KDE Neon, to showcase GNOME. Yes, your desktop. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they were too busy being in you know, a desktop environment that didn't crash all the time. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> well, uh, they did fix the one crash that Jill mentioned, uh, but yeah, <laughs> no more S actually, I it got me curious. It's like, oh, so they have a KDE, KDE neon type of thing. Let me look that up. Yep, that's exactly what that is. It's just a very bare bones uh, version of uh, Linux distro that runs GNOME. It's there to showcase what it can do, and it has the latest version, and it does all the things the way GNOME would you know, uh, have them done, which means it's an operating system that I will never um, willingly <laughs> touch. I Sorry. mean, if someone tricks me and says it's like, oh, it's Linux, like, OK, I'll start poking at it until I open the terminal and see no more S. Oh, bye. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're such a sweetheart. Um, yeah. Now, <laughs> Something I do not have a lot of experience with, we were talking in the pre-show before we went live, is uh, VPNs. I just don't have much of use for them in day-to-day -day life, um, minus, uh, you know, several months back when I was having an issue with uh, DaVinci Resolve, one of their solutions was try resetting your um, registration keys with a VPN, which I think I used, mm. like NordVPN, which I was like, hey, look, they're... They have a Linux option on the command line. I thought that was really sweet. Somebody else wants in on that sweet, sweet um, out of the box Linux VPN action. They do. And it was one of the biggest ones that still didn't have support because NordVPN, uh, private internet access, actually, private internet access has done a bunch of things for Linux in the past, but uh, Proton VPN was still very much missing. There was a community effort that sort of created a um a cli version to that would allow people to use proton vpn but now it's official it's still in beta but it is official and the uh command line is actually very simple it's just proton vpn cli log in your username and then it asks for your password and then you um type in um proton vpn cli C to connect, uh, L to pick the location that you want to use your VPN uh, from, and uh, D for disconnect. That that's very good. That that that's actually very good. <laughs> Considering uh, the PIA alternative, which is n nowhere near as simple, but PIA does have its own GUI, and even better. It's that little script that PIA offers for everyone mm -hmm. who's not uh, on, you know, uh, Goo, uh, Debian or Ubuntu-based distros. You can actually, uh, you can also run that script in Debian and Ubuntu, but that will set the all of the VPN connections that PIA offers uh, into the network manager applet of your desktop environment. You just go into VPN connections and you get the full list of them. You just have to pick one. And uh, I would also recommend going in and adding the uh, username and password to the ones you actually use, because otherwise it just asks you, okay, put in your username and password, boom, you're connected. I think it's neat. That's I mean, really this, nice. This does <laughs> show some acknowledgement. Of, hey man, people are using desktop Linux. Yes, they are. It's kind of brilliant. 
What are your thoughts? Uh, we would like to see some type of GUI or some type of like DE integration. Would you? Re- I guess it'd be better. Oh man, what if we, what if we get a snap <laughs> or app image or flat pack? <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to get Pedro started on something. So it's being distributed as a deb. In- <laughs> so the official Proton beta app does not support split tunneling right now or running on a headless system. So you'll still have to use the community Linux client for that until they they bring that functionality into the official app. So that's very important to know. And... Um, What's, what is awesome is that the Proton Mail Bridge for Linux was launched in April, and it is really nice to see more progress being done for Linux with, with their VPN, the Proton VT, VPN. Very cool. I've been using PIA for a while, so, but it's nice to see some other, uh, lots of more effort done on the Linux side. <laughs> more support. I mean, more yes. support. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Blender just keeps on releasing new hotness. Oh it can't yes, be stopped. it can't be <laughs> one stopped. Day, one day They're we're gonna amazing. get a finished version of Centel game. <laughs> <laughs> so Blender two point nine one has been released, and this is the fourth major re- release of our favorite open source three D and two D animation and modeling app of this year. So this is this is really amazing. There are lots of sculpting updates. That's that's actually huge in this re- release. And the sculpting includes support for collisions in the what? cloth sculpting <laughs> tool. <laughs> and it also introduces improvements to bevels and Boolean operations and updates to the UI animation and simulation tools. And this is uh, one of my favorite new tools is the new box trim and lasso trim tool, which lets you add and remove geometry from a model using box selection or lasso gestures. That's really helpful. And some of the other 3D programs out there allow you to do this. So they're just, they're doing all these fine I can tweaks finally make with- whatever that's supposed to be. Yay. <laughs> Yes, and you can make oh, it blink. It's, it's an <laughs> avocado <blink>. with the, <laughs> with red hair. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> There's their motion. Uh, that, <laughs> no, no, can't have that too long on screen. Otherwise, Jet Set Radio is going to sue somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and and thank you to M Fox Dog for letting us know about this update. That's pretty cool. Blender's man. rules. Blender's <laughs> a great program apps. that, you know, everything in my life is going swimmingly, as long as I don't have to use it. <laughs> you know that XKCD about uh, how well your life is going till the last time you open um, <laughs> XOR Conf for Venice Blender. It is. Man. Yeah, it is actually. I, I he just likes to, to use it, it for doing test renders. He doesn't like to use it for much more. Oh, uh, to the contrary, Jill. I use it to make actual things that I use I instead know. of test renders. Yes, and so have I. That's what Fox uses it for. I'm sure he uses it for other yeah. things, but That's we always see the test renders. <laughs> That's genuinely my fans. issue with um, blenders because you know I don't sit and play with it. And, yeah. uh, but hey, man, that's a great update. A little bit of a kind of a PSA I want to throw out, but Humble has a big royalty-free music bundle. We know a lot of people here. You know, you might do a little Twitch stream and you might do a little podcasting and all that fun stuff. And maybe you're interested in this because this is a gang of stuff, man. It's 29 albums, royalty-free music, 25 bucks. Of course, we have a what do you call it? An affiliate link. If you want to click on that and that's on our website, that'd be awesome. If not, that's fine. Whatever. Uh, you get, you know, three, five albums for a buck, 1798. You get more than five albums, 10, mm-hmm. 11. <laughs> and I give them 25 bucks. I got all these, man, all these albums. And nice. I went to extract them the other day, Pedro. <laughs> yeah, you did. Adventures did. in extraction. <laughs> first things first, humble girlfriend. You, <laughs> You got to work on that bulk download for the um, zip files. Me and Jordan were like, really? Jordan was talking about an ebook bundle, but that takes a long time. Just like one big zip file. But I, I get all the zips downloaded, you know, and it's, um, I don't know, almost 30 individual zip files I had. And like any normal person, I'm like, well, you know, let's just unzip, e, do, start up, just go for it. First one, second, but, <laughs> huh. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Mm-hmm. Let's just download that zip again. Maybe, maybe that one was bad. Blah. Okay. 
<laughs> let's skip that one. Blech. <laughs> and, all right. What's going on? And I, I went play around looking around and uh, Pedro, Pedro just told me the dumbest thing in the world. He, he suggested the stupidest idea I'd ever heard. He said, well, just unroar them. But it's a zip file, Pedro. And it's like, no, no, man. <laughs> that, Remember that issue that uh, Mir was having about bundle uh, zips being RARs? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, As it turns out, I think Mir's that biggest was issue was installing RAR. <laughs> That's what hung me up. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't his ability to use RAR. It's like, wait, wait. <laughs> um, yeah. So. I, I did, um, I think, uh, 25 um, or possibly 26 zip files are, in fact, RARs. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. I'm not going to tell you which ones they are because I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, basically, my solution for actually, there's a, we got a little bit of hate mail for Saturday show. Somebody wrote in with a very clever way of um, picking through them and changing them. But yeah, just do an unzip. You'll see what the list that fails and like boom, nuke those mm -hmm. and do a mass rename of all the zip files to RAR. Then you can just unrar them and it'll work if you want to go through it. Um, yeah, that's the thing. That's a little PSA uh, because I sent Humble a support ticket and Humble hit me back and they're like, have you tried using WinZip and seven? <laughs> <laughs> so I have you tried <laughs> looking up yeah. Linux. Yes. I, I, I sent them back a way to pull the hex out of it. I'm like, here, run this command against it and see what it says when it says R-A-R -R when it dumps the um, <laughs> and get back to me. They haven't written me back. Okay. Yeah. Um, Pedro, you use laptops and uh, I, do. I, I know Linux has always had a little bit of a problem, you know, like um, CPU power throttling. Energy uh, balancing, yeah. yes. <laughs> because you can either have your laptop be extremely slow but use almost no energy or it could be very very fast and your battery will be dead in 30 minutes <laughs> it, that will happen but uh there have been many attempts um laptop tools for example they uh have very aggressive power savings but it will still keep uh the a processor uh power related stuff governor and other things they will try to keep those moderate so that if you do need a bit more performance it will still give it to you but at the core of tools like um laptop tools you have cpu power which but is pedro, a tool. pedro it's really easy though man i just create I, I have a cycling bash script that i can just double click on my <laughs> desktop enter my root password and eventually it'll get to the uh. right governor if i run it enough times <laughs> There couldn't possibly be an easier way to do this. There are actually other scripts that don't need a root password that take care of it for you when you plug in and unplug the power uh, supply to the laptop. But what if I'm a Windows D, user and I can't use, I don't know how to type. Because that's the only reason I wouldn't. Uh, uh, I, I, well, I, in that I, case, yeah. there there is a GUI for CPU oh, okay. power, uh, and what it does, uh, <laughs> if you have an Intel processor, uh, it will actually let you set the um, actual P states. You can enable specific P states. So if you want either like maximum performance um, and maximum power savings with none of the in betweens. You can. Uh, if you have an AMD processor, it just shows you like the maximum and minimum frequency. You can adjust those. There are some sliders to adjust those. But you can't change any kind of uh, power states in between. At least I couldn't. But then again, I have most of them disabled on my 3700X. So that may be the issue too. But the... Um, yeah, no, it's CPU power GUI. The, the most important thing, uh, if you just install it from the um, the repos, if you're running Ubuntu, they have one of those package trackers for the different distros, and there's only three uh, distros that have it at the latest version, which is 1.0. Big kudos. Uh, it's in the AUR, so it's not even in the official Arch repos. Uh, it's uh, Open Mandriva Rolling and Open Mandriva Cooker. So, yes, mm -hmm. if you have Ubuntu or Fedora or something like that, not 0.7 is what you're currently looking at. <laughs> this got my attention because this made me like, what do I really want? It? Oh, right. You can run it on your Pine, pine phone. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Done. <laughs> I mean, if you don't want to type in pseudo CPU power G, uh, no, mm -hmm. frequency set G and then the 
uh, have you, <laughs> ever, have you ever noticed that you want to use like a too? six inch? It is adorable watching me try to. Yes, I would like a gooey. Oh, with your big hands. Yes, that would be a challenge. Yeah, this is this is really nice. It's an easy way to set your CPU to performance for playing games if game mode isn't That's installed. An way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's actually good for those of us who do a lot of rendering of animation videos cuz there's some there's some soft the software that doesn't support GPU acceleration yet. So we have to, we're relying on CPU. But I was really happy. I actually found this in R Linux. So I was really happy to come across CPU power GUI. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's <laughs> mm -hmm. the thing. Uh, go check it out if you want. I found um, on demand is my it, it is my new hotness for governors for desktop and again for laptops mm. it makes perfect sense conservative <laughs> yeah uh yeah, simply for because laptops, most your laptops are going to be intel anyway because amd only made seven cpus <laughs> for <laughs> so it would see yeah <laughs> <laughs> really cool in theory, but much like an AMD video card or an NVIDIA video card, they might as well not exist at this point. But if you can't get your hands on them, maybe you want to do some video editing. There's a new version, mm -hmm. a new beta for DaVinci Resolve Studio 17 point. Not it's their gang of new things to play with, man. There's a support for that DaVinci Resolve speed editor, which basically mm -hmm. if you buy a licensed copy of uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is like 300 bucks, they just throw that thing in, man. And it's like a metal uh control surface with a wheel that you can turn around if that's what you want to do it's kind of brilliant and there's also support for that ridiculously overpriced fairlight mini console which is like a a, a, a little box with some motorized faders on it that during the presentation they showed that and i just man they, <laughs> i i thought they were going to black magic that price up to like a grand i'm like i bet they're going to try to charge a thousand dollars for that control surface and they're like no then three thousand dollars <laughs> okay oh. <laughs> yeah uh, yes <laughs> so, uh, okay there's support for independent uh track height that's good because everything defaults to like mice type so you can't see your waveforms your thumbnails very well and the new davinci beta and the open toolkit that i just talked about last time for davinci resolve for workflow integrations and plugins and codecs and all that that's there and um uh, one thing I do want to point out, uh, there's a bunch of stuff for audio. There's even native support for 44.1 for your audio clips and instruments and all that fun stuff. Uh, just This is a big, big, big update. Uh, it's try huge. it. Bunch of bug fixes. Uh -huh. uh, still, I know a lot of people are going to ask, like, but then can I directly import my MP4s uh, on Linux to the free version? To which I'll um, happily respond, nay. Um, <laughs> but it's a cool product. I mean, if you're doing um, any type of serious video editing, I highly suggest going and checking it out. Now, one thing I do want to point out with this version, with the latest 17, um, since the first version, normally I would say if you're on Debian or anything like that, anything outside of CentOS, um, you would use make resolve deb, make deb resolve, whichever one it was to do that like I've done in my guides. But I did notice that on, if you're running Debian 10, or I'm pretty sure like on your Ubuntu's 18.04, uh, 20.04s, you can just run the run file if you want to feel brave and it should install regularly. You don't need to kill the X nice. server like the NVIDIA drivers? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what I was impressed with this version with this version is they're using their neural engine AI much more. So the Magic Mask now uh, using is using the DaVinci neural engine and it generates tracking masks, which will be a lot easier for projections. And um, I've actually been waiting for these effects to come to DaVinci. There, it's the Resolve FX motion trails, temporal motion blur, object trails, and disco effects. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of about time because I've been using those effects in animation apps since the '80s. <laughs> so I was waiting for that for in DaVinci. Well, I and mean, it's, it's pretty advanced <laughs> effects for a video editor. <laughs> yeah, but it also is doing motion graphics now as well. Well, it's, um, it's like Fusion Light. I mean, it's yeah. got Fusion in it. I should make also point their 3D <laughs> modeling suite Fusion is available too, uh, the latest version. <laughs> yeah. 
So there's just, um, uh, speaking of, uh, of the motion graphics integrated, uh, they have GPU accelerated 2D shapes uh, toolkit now for motion graphics, which is really awesome. And uh, just uh, something fun and, and, and cool is you can now uh, directly upload to Twitter from within DaVinci Resolve. <laughs> So that was, I don't, I would never do that, but you don't have there. to worry about it because on Linux, none of that works. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> this is like a, one of the mm -hmm. feature parodies that's off with the Linux version. The Mac and Windows yeah, versions have account Windows integrations version. for YouTube and Twitter and stuff like that. So you can post directly. Don't have to worry about that on Linux. This is not there. Well, you just <laughs> export it out and then upload it. <laughs> There you go. So it's uh, going to be just as slow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not going to save you any time, man. Um, keep that in mind. Go play with it. The free version is free, as in beer. And uh, yeah, I just thought I'd give it a mention. It's what I use to make these shows because you're talking about the ability to leverage GPU compute. So I'm able to do a 1080p 60 hour long video. And render that out in H.265 HEVC, um, main 10 profile, 12, 13 minutes. So that is game changing when it comes down to um, production speed wise. So yes. <laughs> go play with it. Still got plenty of love for Katie and live. But yeah, when it comes to like time, hmm. let's stick with video online and um, from the men blog because they've been working on something, man. Uh, Festivus is coming fast and ho, ho, ho. Here's Mint TV effectively. Yeah. Yep. Uh, hypnotics. Uh, you got a preference screen now so you can configure multiple TV providers. <laughs> That's interesting. And, you know, if you've got VOD set up. Massively illegal depending on the country, yes. It's going to be setting up um, IMDB. <laughs> it's going to be pulling data from that. And um, it's currently available. So TVs, movies, and sales. That was my real question. I'm like, where do you get all? Well, I know a lot of um, channels. I'm going to say non-English channels are available yes. <laughs> from the broadcasters. Um in IPTV format, but the only ones I can think of offhand are, I don't know how I would hook into them because they're usually on like, um, what I think of offhand is ABC, not ABC, what you're thinking. I'm talking about the Australian broadcasting, uh, their news service is there. And, um, I know Sky News and, um, who else? Who else has got some... <laughs> Pedro, you should know these things. No, no. It's NASA TV. <laughs> That's NASA free. TV. Uh, <laughs> yes. A couple of places, but yeah, I don't know um, who this would be uh, useful to. I mean, but yeah, the, is, the ones yeah. on YouTube you could already access. Uh, this, I'm assuming, is for the other ones. Oh, is, is this like a Plex play? They're like, no, this is for your massive library of uh, ripped DVDs. Uh, it does have some EPG support, whatever that is. Uh, PVR, which is kind of interesting because you can do time shifting, recording, pausing, all that. Custom categories, favorites, hiding unused content, and the likes. So, yeah, it's available as a deb if you want to go play with it. they got a GitHub. If you want to, uh, yeah, it's an M3 UIP TV player. So if that's something yeah. you were looking for. If I, you can find that M3U somewhere on the interwebs, hidden somewhere in that website's uh, source code, you could just feed it directly to Hypnotics. Admittedly, I've had to go digging to get links to play with VLC on web zones that were so atrocious. High Crunchyroll? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, man. That was a thing. <laughs> Really? I wish I could just drop a Crunchyroll link into MPV so that I could actually get some proper full screen and some proper scaling. <laughs> My Crunchyroll story is I bought a month of Crunchyroll because uh, we might have talked about it on this show. Somebody had made you had to have a Crunchyroll account to do this, but you could pick an entire series off Crunchyroll and just... <laughs> Allegedly, I might have done that because it was like some the... <laughs> like last DBZ series I wanted to watch. And I tried to watch the cruncher. I was like, this is a miserable. Oh no. But I was able to do that. Allegedly able to do it that way. I don't know what the legalities are. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, it's not illegal. They might try to sue you, but it's not illegal. Yeah, I wouldn't have to worry about it because I didn't do it, allegedly. <laughs> Not well, a good, I think that's why just, I said they might. Yeah, I think it's just cool that we have a new program that lets you watch TV. There's, you know, few and far between now. I mean, there's uh, other programs out there that do this, but it's the it's nice to see a new one. <laughs> so, do you see how much uh, YouTube TV is now? <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, what I don't is have on YouTube, YouTube TV, TV anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I had this question hit me earlier this week, and it was like, I want to get rid of TV and all that. YouTube TV. Let's look into that. Maybe that would be a solution for you. Like for the decent package, you know, the equivalent. Guess, Pedro. Just give me a number. Uh, twenty four ninety nine a month. Jill, uh, give me a number. Th uh, Thirty five. Eighty bucks. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, I believe there's a word for that, but it's Wednesday, so I no, can't say no, it. No, there is. There, there, there is. There's, there's a perfectly <laughs> safe one. It's called cable TV. I mean, you're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's still stupidly expensive for a cable TV package, <laughs> especially when you factor in you, your edit out on top of that, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, well, Hulu lets you do that too, but you can pick and choose. Uh, what stations you want, which is nice. So we still got a ways to go on that. All right. Um, <laughs> hey, we got to do a little bit of a shameless self-promotion. That's right. But we do have some people mm -hmm. we need to thank this week, Jill, because uh, uh, yeah. you lot out there make it possible. Patreon.com <laughs> forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's how we do everything here. Keep the lights on and all that fun stuff. But, uh, you know, it's Christmas time and some people are like, hey, man, we're going to help you out a little extra. Oh, well, one of my favorite people in the community, <laughs> Kai Linux, he increased his pledge. Thank you, Kai. We love you. He had had joined us at the at this year's scale. Uh, at our scale that's house. why he's your favorite. You actually got to <laughs> yeah. meet him. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes, cool. I know him. <laughs> <laughs> and also to Vera Tanuda, he increased his pledge. He's been a, a strong supporter of LGC for years. The naked truth himself. Yes. <laughs> yes. We love Vera Tanuda. Thank you. <laughs> that is you guys awesome. Are awesome. We do thank you for that. And um, yeah, as a patron, not only do you help us do what we do, we can keep them loud, live, independent, free of ads and all that, but we got extra stuff for you too. We, we try to spice up the deal a little bit. If mm -hmm. you like kind of our jobs, we do the uncut series of this. If you're listening to this show, this show takes about an hour and a half to two hours to do. And that's the live and uncut mm -hmm. version. And we throw that out in a custom RSS feed for patrons uh, and in podcast format. So you can just listen to that. And that's nothing compared to Saturday. If you need four hours of people talking about everything from the latest Mandalorian episode to Linux <laughs> gaming. Yeah. Four hour version of that each and every week, plus a pre pre super shows and which is our production meeting. And uh, if you want to know what's going on behind the scenes and just stuff like that, uh, plus access to our discord where we're at the other, six days of the week just that's where we talk that's our equivalent of slack if you don't know what discord is it's slack you don't need to install an application for it you just go to the web zone that's what we all do because yeah that client man still doesn't have spell check and i don't know how to spell <laughs> 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 All right. Um, that's enough shilling. Let's get into uh, a slice of pie for ah. resources for Pi Day. And Cherry pie. Pedro, you got some Pecan jam. Mm, yes. Uh, so, Noop Loop, if that is uh, their real name, uh, <laughs> has decided to create... <laughs> A couple of uh, bits of software, uh, which you can also combine it all into what they call PyJam OS. And what it does is it creates um, a little software uh, mixer for you to use on a Raspberry Pi. In that case, you can see in the picture, he's got one of them big touch screens over the Pi. And the uh, UI uh, screenshot right below it shows some big buttons and some chunky uh, selection boxes so that you can actually use it with your finger. And it does, uh, yeah, it, it seems to be uh, doing, it's either unnecessarily complicated pulse audio or a very basic version of jack <laughs> um, um so you sweet sober child there's no music production being done with pulse audio yeah <laughs> but yeah i'm looking at the screenshots it's like that could be powerful control but probably not 
Uh, but yeah, it is a very simple way to do it. Uh, the PyJam GitHub contains the bits of software, so if you already have a Py running and you just want the software, just get it. Or you can get uh, PyJam OS mm-hmm. with the whole thing. And then just uh, plug your devices in to the Raspberry Pi and let it uh, help you do any kind of music production, voice recording. It's kind of interesting. Whatever if you're doing some like, loops and samples, I mean, the, especially Raspberry Pi 4 series, uh, you got you got some horsepower to play with, man. Once there's, you know, everything's been built for it and to have a touch screen. That could be handy. I mean, if you're going to make your beep boop, awesome. I hate it when I call it beep boop music, but come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's there. That's something you should definitely look at um, as opposed to trying to set up a like complete DAW setup on quite possibly the most hostile environment known to music production under Linux, but everyone loves to do it. An old laptop. <laughs> <laughs> because 99 out of 100 problems with Linux audio is I'm repurposing this 10 year old laptop. <laughs> like, I'm not helping you because that's a horrible <laughs> idea. It's the Linux device, it's the device that they don't actually use. So, mm-hmm. oh, we can install Linux on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, w- is this acknowledgement? In any way, shape, I think it is. Fashion. It's coming from the Raspberry Pi blog, the official one, <laughs> and written by Eben Upton himself. So yeah, I think it is a new product from the fine fine <laughs> carbon based entities at Raspberry Pi, a Pi Four case fan. To which we'll all say, for what the Pi Four? That thing that practically sucks heat out of the environment. Not really. <laughs> um, check it out, man. Uh, they're launching this. Docking fillers, so man, okay, ah, uh, that's funny. Uh, you, you can't keep stuff in stock, um, outside of holiday seasons. You might be able to get this in nine months. Um, Pi 4 cool, even when running it, you get a nice little aluminium block. How big is the fan? Uh, 40 mil, 40 mil fan. Is it does it come with like a case attachment? Uh, it comes with the uh, little uh, transparent plastic bracket that clips onto the inside of the official Raspberry Pi 4 case. Okay. And it has the uh, GPIO pins already for you to just plug them in. Mm-hmm. And it does a wonderful, wonderful job of... Uh, not only did it, does it significantly improve the temperature of the pie inside the case which uh, they have a graph at the uh, bottom of the article uh, which is uh, the first one is outside and it goes to like 70 and that's where it sort of levels out uh, and then they have another one inside the case which goes up to like 83 and that's where it sort of levels out and then they put the fan inside and the uh, the bottom most graphic shows that it barely even clips 67 so that's good. It, it's <laughs> basically uh, the uh, temperature curve is the same as if it was you know exposed to the air and just having uh, the air circulate like that it actually improves on that that that's amazing. Wow. It's For a teeny almost... tiny little fan and teeny tiny little heat sink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving air, man. That, that's like the brilliant thing about it. And it's like thermodynamics or thing. And But yeah. that's uh, what they're doing is they're pulling air uh, from in between the USB and um, Ethernet ports in the front and then exhausting it out the back where the... Uh, SD card is. You see, it's so you- I wonder if you flip the uh, <laughs> the Raspberry Pi case upside down, does Uh-oh. convection help? <laughs> no, Pedro. No, Pedro. You see the U- USB three. If you look on the back there, you can see they're blue, right? So oh, uh, that makes it colder. Two blue okay. ones. Yeah, it's chillers, man. It's USB three chillers. So that's yeah. <laughs> that, that's how okay. It works, yeah. Kids. Right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and it's Except only blue $5. blue light is actually warmer than <laughs> red light, but let's not get into that. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so it's only $5 for this this little fan. Of, of course, it okay, should be Okay, $5 for a 40 mil fix. fan is, um, yeah. <laughs> what's the expression around here? Taking the piss? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's an official fan. Yeah. <laughs> it's Even the then, official then, fan. Then, Five dollars for forty mil fans. I'm trying to grab some forty mil fans that I have around here. Oh yeah, I've got. I've I've bought some. I think for like twenty cents before. <laughs> 
Yeah, they were like mm-hmm. a pound each. <laughs> I I am more than content to just wait. Maybe maybe we'll edit this for time and the bond guys, but <laughs> Well, I found a 60 mil. We're getting uh, there. We've made progress. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Where the heck are they? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe they've ran away from you. But since you... I wouldn't put it past them. Okay. <laughs> yes, Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to write us about your 40 millimeter fan collection and your superior organizational skills compared to one Pedro Mateus, <laughs> you can head over to linuxgamecast.com forward slash contact. Smash that button if you're a game developer for our Saturday show. Check us out on our curator page or you can send direct. Uh, just make sure you have a working Linux build. I got a thing for audio equipment. If you have some old stuff in your rack, I'd love to take a look at it, put it on my list and let people know that they can make music in Linux. But for this show, just uh, select Linux weekly, daily Wednesdays. Give us a name, give us an email, maybe a subject. Hey, possibly a message. And you know what? We'll get it. Um, it might do something with it, man. We'd love to know what you're up to. Or maybe you just have yeah. a question. Pedro, please tell me I bought you enough time to get a fan. Uh, again, <laughs> I think I moved those fans to and on that the show, cover below the team. I know. We're roll the <laughs> I know exactly where mine are, and they are out of reach. <laughs> so. Yeah, mine are out of reach now because I remember because I couldn't close one of the drawers on this um, IKEA thing, and I was like, "What? <laughs> What's behind the drawer that doesn't let me close it properly? So I yanked on it, and it was one of the 40 mil fans. Mm. <laughs> so then I just grabbed them all and uh, put there. some um, elastic bands around them and tossed them in with the other big 120s and 140 mil fans that I have. And they're Aww. below the TV now. <laughs> Well, I, I actually do have some in hand's reach, but I can't open up the case. It's on there in. I have tons of them in my little blade server right here. <laughs> my HP ProLiant. Oh, the levitation fans. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> See you next week, people. Love you all. <laughs> Bye.